Welcome to Case Bake Watches, my name is Tim and in this episode I'd like to speak about metal. And I'm not talking about man -o war here, I want to talk about the metal as a watch material. Because there are so many metals out there, I mean steel, gold, rose gold, pink gold, titanium and everything. And um, yeah, I've, I've done some research and I found some very surprising facts. For example, did you know that silver is much softer than yellow gold? I didn't know this. This was complete news to me, um, together with some other facts. And so in this video I'd like to go through all the metals, all the common metals, the watch metals. And at the end of the video you will find a nice chart where you can see how hard your watch actually is. Okay, most common material for watches and if we talk about steel, we're talking about stainless steel or inox steel. It's called also sometimes inox steel and this is um, from the French. Let me check my notes. <laughs> I don't speak French. This was inoxidable, inoxidable, inoxidable. So if you check your Rolex clasps and you find steel inox inside and this means stainless steel. And this stainless steel is always a, is an alloy, iron, together with a large quantity of chromium and some nickel. And in Germany they called, back then they called it actually Chromstahl, because the chromium was so present in the material and it gives strength to the, to the iron. And there are huge differences in quality. We all have heard this, this story about the Rolex steel, that Rolex has invented its own steel and it's super robust. And, and I found some information that this is not true. Rolex didn't invent this. They use a very high quality steel, but this steel is available on the global market for every manufacturer who is willing to pay the price for it. But as I said, at the end of this video you will find a chart and there we com can compare Rolex steel with ordinary steel. And now another surprise, stainless steel can show rust. This uh, was a complete news to me, although I have, I have seen this before. Um, imagine again, uh, vintage Rolex Datejust. I've made an entire video about how to buy a vintage Rolex Datejust. Link over here. And sometimes, if you um, check the, if you want to check the serial number or the reference number between the lugs, then sometimes it's hard to see because you see their corrosion. And some people then then freak completely out and they say, "What's going on? This is rust. This is stainless steel. Why can I see rust here?" And yeah, stainless steel me doesn't mean 100% free. Of rust, it means um, um, nearly free, and so after some decades on the wrist, even even Chromstahl, even steel inox shows a little bit of rust. So this is pretty normal. Titanium. Okay, this is the strongest strongest material, or the, let's say the strongest metal out there, because it has the highest strength to density. And back then in the 60s, the Russian built entire submarines with titanium, very, very expensive, but they reached depths down to, I think, 800 meters, which was an incredible achievement. But again, too pricey, too complicated to manufacture, and so they're back in steel now. And as a watch material, of course, it has its, its qualities. It's super robust. It's totally immune against corrosion and scratch resistant and great material. But at the same time, the watches are rather pricey and they are not so beautiful, to be frank. I mean, luxury watches, luxury materials, but titanium is a strong material, not a luxury material in my eyes. Because it's, maybe it's only my opinion, but I think it's a really, really ugly material for a watch. But okay, you don't have to agree if you like your titanium timepieces. Okay, silver comes always in the form of sterling silver, which is coin silver, which is an alloy, 925 pieces of silver, together basically with copper and other small ingredients, but basically together with copper. And this leads to the look, because silver is always a little bit yellowish, and this is the copper. And yeah, it's very soft and it involves a characteristic patina which some people like, other people don't like this. It was very popular as a watch material in the 20s. We can think of pocket watches, for example. There it was in heavy use. And nowadays it's a very exotic watch material because it has two downsides, or let's say three downsides. It's relatively soft. This is the first one. The second one is the patina. Some people like this type of patina, others don't. And the problem number three is the copper. Some people react allergic and then you have copper on your naked skin and 
then you have a red mark under your watch. This is very unpleasant. And that's, by the way, why, uh, the reason why jewelers and watchmakers plate silver with rhodium. And rhodium is a very uh, glossy, br bright material. Actually, I can show you this very good. With the, with the, I don't know if this thing focuses now. This is, this is sterling silver. This is sterling silver covered with rhodium and you can see it's very glossy and very bright and there is no yellow color in it. And now you may ask why they, they've chosen the material silver in the first place when they <laughs> cover everything with rhodium. Then, uh, I don't know, I think it's in the tradition maybe. Maybe back then it was easier to manufacture something, uh, it was easier to plate silver than other materials. And nowadays I think it's tradition and they want you to think that this is plated and under the plating is even something something very special. I mean, uh, think of the famous Cartier tank. There you have it, sterling silver plated with gold. And they want that you know that even under the gold is something precious, something beautiful and precious. First thing, we have to understand that you will not find pure gold on the market. You will find pure gold if you go to your bank and buy yourself um, a bar of gold or a certain coin. But in jewelry and watchmaking we're talking about an alloy again and you can measure this in the carat system or parts per thousand. Very simple, carat system 24 carats is 100% gold. And so 12 uh, carats is 50% gold and our common 18 carat gold is 75% of gold and the rest is silver, copper and some other ingredients, some other materials. And the problem with pure gold, of course, is it's too soft for what? I mean, look at those, those vintage pieces. They are sometimes they are round like stones because they are over polished and yeah, it's a real problem. And then you find um, alloys with, let's say, 14 carats of gold or even 9 carats of gold. And those are really robust watches, but they are not as beautiful as pure gold. This is the problem. This is the sort of balance. On, on, here you have the, the high carat gold and it's very soft. And here you have the low carat gold and it's, it's not so beautiful. And so we have to find a, a, a way in the middle. And so my recommendation is if you find a beautiful watch with 14 carat and it looks good and you like it, then maybe this is the better buy than the 18 carat. But little recommendation, stay away from 9 carat watches. I mean, the, the problem is it, it doesn't look as good as gold and, and um, it will evolve patina, so corrosion, and then you have a corroded golden watch. And this is, uh, this is rather ugly. And the reason for this are, of course, the other materials in the alloy. In the, alloy. the other, other materials will show corrosion, not the gold. But if you have only 9 carat gold in it, then... Technically, it's, it's a mixture of, of yeah, some crappy materials together with a little bit of gold. White gold, very interesting topic. First thing we have to understand, white gold is not another gold. White gold is again an alloy, um, yellow gold together with white materials. And let's say you have a very high quality of white gold, then you have yellow gold with a big amount of palladium. Palladium, palladium is super pricey and, and so the, the manufacturers tend to mix other things in it, let's say nickel. The problem is now, if you have a cheap white gold aloe with large amounts of nickel, then the color is rather gray and not so beautiful as you want to see it and it can cause allergic reactions. And again, then the manufacturers cover everything in rhodium again. Yeah, that's the problem. Often people think when they see rhodium that this is white gold. This is a very, very crazy. But of course, you can have a very high quality alloy with um, yellow gold and huge amounts of palladium and then you don't need a uh, rhodium plating. But then the alloy is so pricey that yeah, the watch will set you back a little bit more than, than the, the usual white gold alloy. Same thing. This is not another material, this is another alloy. And so if you want to make rose gold, then you add a little bit more copper to your yellow gold and then the color turns into that, that, that certain flavor. And so it's impossible to say that, um, let's say, uh, rose gold has a higher quality or is harder or more robust or more luxurious. 
it has another look. It has another look, it's another alloy, but I'm afraid that's it. Brass. We all know the surface of brass because if you see your local jazz band and somebody plays the trumpet or the trombone, then there you have your brass. And brass is not an element, it's again an alloy of copper and zinc. And it's a very, very cheap material. In fact, my first watch was a, was a chrome plated watch. And when the chrome plating came off, then I could see the copper underneath and it was this brown, unattractive material. So very cheap, very soft cause allergic reactions again that's the reason why or one reason one reason why it's it's plated with chromium and so stay away from it by the way i've seen recently on kickstarter a watch made to, out of brass and um, maybe i'm bad at form but i don't i don't see any sense in this i mean it's it has so many downsides and the only upside the only advantage is that it's special that but uh, again you can you can you can suffer allergic reactions it evolves a very unattractive patina, corrosion, and so and, and it's cheap and, and yeah, I could ramble and ramble and ramble about the negative sides of brass um, for watch cases and so I don't get the idea. But if you have other informations why this is in fact a good idea, please share them in the comments. Okay, bronze. Very, very, very close to brass because again we're talking about an alloy with copper in it, 60% of copper and here together with tin. And many people love the patina of bronze because it's, yeah, it, there's some beauty in it and you can play with it very good. You can polish it a little bit and then you can, basically you can rub it off and then it will grow again. And so you can play a little bit with your watch case, with the surface of your watch case. And I, I see the point there. The downsides are it's soft, it's soft. And again, copper can cause allergic reactions. And so this is, by the way, the reason that you often see those watches with the uh, with the strap which covers your wrist, and then the watch sits off uh, on on the leather to prevent allergic reactions. But again, it can be a cool addition for for, for a watch collection to have one bronze watch. It can be really fun, and reminds me always of working environments. Not necessarily the plumber, <laughs> although he works um, a lot with with uh, bronze. But also some, I don't know, some some environments, technical environments with a little bit of technical adventure in it. And so yeah, it can be a great addition, but we have to face the downsides of the material. Okay, platings. We're close to the end of this video, but now get let's go uh, quickly through platings. First, gold plated. Huge differences in quality. You can see high quality gold platings. I'm wearing um, the Tissot Banana. <laughs> Many people really hate that watch, but I find it, it's really cool. And th this, is, this is a really beautiful um, gold plated, or uh, beautiful gold plating. But you can see different examples and then the, the, the plating is rather brown. And it doesn't look like gold, it looks, yeah, cheap and so, but there's no, there's no measurements. You have to see the piece and you have to judge with your own eye, is this a beautiful, is this a beautiful gold plating? And the reputation of gold plating in general is rather bad and yeah, I don't know if this is justified. Sometimes in my eyes it's better. I don't know if you ever have worn a chronograph Swiss from the 50s and 60s and they come in 18 karat gold and the cases are thin like paper. And if you touch the door with the watch, then your watch is gone. You can find those those watches on eBay, and they're smashed. They're they're really really squeezed and smashed and like 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 bubble gum. And so in this case, gold plated would be a better solution, uh, definitely. And the uh, most famous example, of course, is the Cartier Tank, sterling silver plated with gold. Um, and the the problem here is the gold plating with Cartier is not very robust. It's beautiful but not very robust. If you see a Cartier tank, five years old, then you can see the silver through the lux. This is the problem, but we'll talk about replating in a second. Okay, but now second plating is of course chromium. Yeah, let's forget that. I mean, this is rubbish. You can find um, collectible pieces, I'm thinking of any car and the early Aorus models, which are chrome plated, but oh, I don't know if the surface is, it looks it looks cheap and so I personally have decided I, I stay away from from chrome plated watches not my not my cup of tea. 
Okay, next, rhodium plated. Um, rhodium is the Lamborghini under the platings. So if you see something covered with rhodium, then it can be a really good sign because the material is super pricey and the material is, is, is gorgeous. It's just gorgeous. I mean, the half of the globe thinks this is white gold because it's so beautiful. And so I'm really a fan of rhodium plated things. Even it can be um, used to cover a rather low quality alloy. Okay, so those are our, our common platings, gold, rhodium, chromium, we forget chromium, we're talking about gold and rhodium. And the good thing here is you can um, replate a watch. I don't know if this is the correct word in English, replate, <laughs> I don't know. But you know what I mean, you can, you can give your, your plated watch to the watchmaker and then he will disassemble everything and then he sent the, the case to a jeweler and he can replate the, the watch case with gold or rhodium and then you have um, basically a new watch case and then the watchmaker can assemble everything but you um, have to pay for all this. I mean there are some people involved and there are some hours involved, some materials and so this is rather pricey but it's possible. Okay and now the last bit of information, gold filled. Entirely different from gold plated, totally different. Um, gold filled means there you have, you have a base metal um, in most cases a steel and then the manufacturer puts a thick layer of gold on top. You can see this um, with golden um, gold filled Omega constellations from, from the uh, 50s, 60s where the heydays of when Omega used um, um, gold filled. And this is very robust. I think you cannot fix it very good but it's not necessary. A good gold filling will last yeah, forever. I've never seen you know, a, a constellation with, with damaged lugs, for example, and the lug, of course, is the first place um, where you would see such a damage. And so gold fill is a, is a, yeah, it's a sign of quality. Exhausted. Enough about metal. Can we talk about man war now? <laughs> it's strange, but um, when I was 16, there was a huge hype in school around man war and I don't know why, I don't recall why, but okay, different story. Okay, end of the video, enough about metal. If I have made a mistake, if you find mistakes here in the information, or if you want to add something, then please don't hesitate, post it in the comments. And now let me thank you very much for your attention and maybe until next time.